Its third and final act was only finished by 10% of players, come on. And it's currently only on PlayStation 5, but PC gamers would absolutely dig this game, so let's make it happen, Sony. That's right, the game of the year is Housemark's Returnal. But wait, before juicing you up with what made Returnal great, let me also grant it the prestigious, the best game to play with the controller right up to your face award. That dual sense is practically doing epic sci-fi down in your hands while you're playing this game. Now another thing that made Returnal the most memorable game of the year is its zero tolerance for you sucking at it, with absolutely no hand holding to help you overcome it. If you don't play Returnal for just a couple of days, then you go back in, you die. You check your phone during combat, you die. You glance at your cat yawning, you die. You try to also have a light conversation about someone else's day, you die. I live for those rare moments where games level me up permanently from there on out, instead of just trying to mildly entertain me for a few dozen hours before I forget I even played it. Returnal's gameplay requires you to be fully focused at all times or you will take a hit, which drops your adrenaline meter losing your bonuses, which also drops your health bar below max, which makes it then harder to expand your max HP with subsequent health pickups, and then you get careless because of all that and you downward spiral into a glorious death. Rekindling almost exactly what happened for me in Dark Souls and Monster Hunter back in the day, Returnal also had that almost tangible single moment where it all clicked for me all of a sudden, as I started annihilating that same game that was just stomping my skull into the dirt over and over for the past few hours. For this reason, the grueling but rewarding journey through Returnal was the most memorable playthrough of a game I had from this year. So a big congrats to the team at Housemark, you got another Game of the Year award but I have no awkwardly heavy trophy to hand out to you this time. Sorry about that. Now, let's get real. Returnal is quite tough, but a 10% completion rate for actually finishing the game is just too low. Over double that amount of people completed Act 2 according to the trophy stats, and must have just hung up their space hat right then and there. So I'm calling you out, internet. If you grabbed Returnal, get back in there, finish the fight, and help with my push to get the White Shadow Gold Trophy completion rate up to, let's say, 15%, indicating a decent amount of people went back in there and actually beat the game. Now here is how I can help. This Game of the Year video just turned into a quick guide for finishing Act 3 of Returnal and snagging that trophy. First, you'll need to have finished Act 2 by beating the boss Ophion, the dude with the big skull. After you beat Ulfion once, Act 3 of the game starts, and your next goal is to acquire all six of these Sun Face Fragments. These appear right next to a corpse, and they show up on the map as the normal greenish triangle icon you often see, but are usually in harder to reach places. So you'll need to thoroughly re-explore the Overgrown Ruins, the Crimson Wastes, the Derelict Citadel, the Echoing Ruins, the Fractured Wastes, and the Abyssal Scar, until you find each one. After you have acquired all six, time to head back to that house towards the start and then make your way down into its basement. This will reward you with a special key that you can use on the vehicle in the ending segment after you beat Ulfion, Skull Guy. After you do that, it'll cue another new confusing cutscene and then you have actually beaten Returnal in its final act. Good job. It's going to take some perseverance if you haven't played in a while, but you got this. Now before I wrap this all up, I gotta mention my other favorite goatee runner-ups. Monster Hunter Rise had my favorite combat mechanics of the entire series. Lost Judgment had some epic fights and a surprisingly good story. The Elden Ring Network test was better than most all 2021 games. That was a joke. Or was it? Loop Hero was more addicting than anyone would have expected. Resident Evil Village had some really memorable moments, and a really tall lady. And both Shin Megami Tensei V and Tales of Arise were both solid RPGs. And those are just some of my picks for Game of the Year, but I'm really more interested in what your choices are, so hit me up in the comments with what you would pick. Also, if you help with that push for 15% for the White Shadow Gold Trophy, shoot me a screenshot of your resounding victory on Twitter, at BoomstickAlex. And last, a big thanks for joining me for this end of the year extravaganza. I don't think just a five minute video can count as an extravaganza, but it'll have to do. 
I'll see you later. Oh yeah, almost forgot one. Zone out and forget your enemies are dropping acid pools. You die. 